I've got an awesome video today or over the next couple of days. I just don't know how long it's going to take. This is my 2020 Ducati Monster 821. Right now I live uh, in Texas, Dallas, 103 to 107, 115 to 117 heat index. It's insane. I just moved my bike out here and this is so hot on my seat, I can't hold my hand there. It's it's that hot where it burns burns my hand so with that said I can't ride my I can't ride this in the summer it's undoable this bike hovers around 120 to 126 degrees when you get stopped at a light uh, and mostly most of my heat comes from this other side rather than the exhaust side uh, I don't know the real reasoning for that but my other leg suffers the one on this side suffers a lot more than this leg uh, does. So uh, what I'm going to do is I think my, my reasoning is the Ducati red coolant that's in this bike is almost like a, sh uh, a sugary water. It's kind of, it's kind of not as fluid as I, as I want. And you can see I'm already starting to per profusely sweat and I've only been out here about three minutes. So I'm going to... Uh, this, this Ducati red coolant that's in this bike has uh, created all kinds of problems. In the winter when it's cold, uh, when I have the cap on normally, it bubbles out onto the floor. When it, when it gets, you know, like uh, 50, 60, 40s, it overflows. And in the summer, it doesn't do that. Uh, so in the winter, I have to crack my cap and uh, when it's kept in my garage so that it doesn't uh, put that red sugary syrup on the ground. And uh, my reasoning, or my mind's telling me that I have better coolant. You can get the engine ice, which will cost, you know, about 30 bucks, or I've got some really good high-end, expensive coolant that goes in my Nissan Infiniti, or my Infiniti Q50 3.0T with a heat exchanger uh, that takes coolant and the radiator that takes coolant. So I'm gonna use my Nissan blue coolant i think i'm gonna i'm do i got a brand new container of that that i haven't used and uh, i'm gonna put that in the bike see what the difference is between temps i'm gonna go ride my bike around uh, around more than just around the block and i got my temp gun and i'm going to measure and look at the temperature on the gauge so this is going to be a really interesting video for some it's already probably been done plenty of times but i'm going to do it anyways because i am going to do it and just might as well make a video also too, it's so hot out here, my camera at uh, 4K, it only runs for about 15 minutes and then it shuts down because it's overheated. That's how hot, I can't film with my camera uh, in, the, in this heat. That's how hot it is. Let's measure my seat real quick. hundred and eighty five on my seat right now all right hopefully you can hear me over the motorcycle but when you're out riding and you get stuck at a light for two three four minutes and the bikes are already close to 200 degrees it kicks up to uh, 226 degrees before the fan kicks on it's just too hot so I'm gonna show you that right now it's just sitting here for like two minutes uh, in this heat so let me just show you real quick right now if it idled for another minute or so it would be up to uh, 220 use the heat gun on the hoses coolant 190 So we just pulled back to my house and my temp was about 207. The big difference is being stuck in traffic surrounded by cars and at a light on the, uh, the concrete. That's when it jumps up to almost 230 degrees before 
or 225 before the fan kicks on. But we're just gonna do this real quick again, just to document cylinder head temp, 239, coolant hose, 197. We got this part of the motor, probably the crank case. It says 210. For giggles, we're gonna do the tire, 148. We're gonna do this side of the cylinder head, 198, and the exhaust. Woo, that's hot. 269, 252. On how I'm gonna do my switcheroo with my coolant, um, I, man, I comes to working on Ducati I'm used to working on Japanese bikes and I'm kind of a little bit timid about working on Ducatis because they are like engineered completely different the Italians yeah they make things that are kind of simple sort of difficult um, so and basically it's just taking the hoses off and uh, dumping the coolant in a pan and uh, taking off the reservoir tank and flushing that uh, and then water back in it from the grocery store uh distilled distilled water there we go Ooh, distilled water and then run the bike and let that cycle through there because i want all that red goo out of this bike and, uh, and then i'm going to put in the fresh coolant that's very liquid very flowing and uh, should do should do a better job It looks like dirty tomato soup, man. Woo. Glad I'm getting rid of this. As I'm telling you, it's like sugar water, man. It's just, it's got like a gel, uh, you know, substance to it. I just, I don't know why, you know, maybe that's okay for Europe's weather, but not, not uh, United States weather or Southern United States weather. So this is gonna go get recycled correctly at the auto parts store and I'm gonna fill it up um, and flush it out, flush the system out and then flush that back into here, collect it and then fill it up with the good coolant this time. All right, this much later, from up here to here to refill that with uh, distilled water and uh, it looks like it's full it's just a a process of filling it up letting it letting it get in there filling it up five minutes of that and uh, then it finally gets filled up and uh, fill up your reservoir container on the other side put your cap on and now we're going to start the bike and uh, cycle that Got all that drained out. Now we're just going to fill it back up with uh, good coolant. If I don't spill it, this is a slow process of filling it up. You got to get the air bubbles out. So I won't make you wait through it, but that's the process. All right, should be full of coolant and it's not taking any more of, of my coolant. So I'm going to start it up and uh, let it run for a little bit and then check it here in a couple of minutes and top it off and then we should be good to go. And I went and rode it around the block, got it warmed about 172. 
It looks like it's going to run cooler, but uh, we'll see tomorrow when during the heat. But uh, I pulled the cap off and the level looks really good and filled up the uh, reservoir tank to where it needs to be. And we're solid. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm back for my ride it does feel a lot warmer today a lot more blistering but I can't verify that till I, till I actually dive into the uh, weather data but the bike is it this seems to be running hotter today uh, with the new coolant uh, let me aim this down just a hair let me recycle the dash the bike is not running of course it says it's 221 today uh, man, that's pretty hot. It's a lot warmer today. I'm a lot more uncomfortable today than I was yesterday at this time. Let's see here. The hose that I shot yesterday, 189. Transmission, 217. Let's get the cylinder head, excuse me. Cylinder head's 239. This cylinder head is 201. The exhaust, which 225, not that big a deal. Exhausts are always hot. Check the tire temperature out now since I've ridden it and I was riding it uh, pretty aggressively. 151 degrees. That's the data I have today. I need to uh, obviously do more and more testing uh, and you know get this in traffic it does seem to cool down a little bit better as I'm riding because the uh, red coolant or the pink coolant the Ducati coolant is thicker I mean there's got to be a reason why they're using that that I'm not aware of and uh, you know I'm ignorant of but uh, and the coolant that I'm using the Nissan blue coolant which is expensive coolant high high caliber high quality coolant is uh, thinner it, it it just flows smoother and it, it's uh more like water 
Well, there you go. I want to finish this video off. I want to come to you really quickly. So I got I got to talk fast so people don't get turned off the video. But um, again, it's going to be like 108 this Saturday. That is really, really, really hot. I don't have my bike out here in the garage because it's literally too hot to ride the Ducati uh, Monster or probably most of the Ducatis. They're just, they just run hot. So my bike is inside in the air conditioner at 78, 79 degrees. And that's about as much as my air conditioner will cool my old house in this old garage. Uh, during the summertime, if it's 106, 107, 108, probably gets around 115 to 120 degrees in here. I'm really hot right now, so I'm going to try to make the video fast. But uh, uh, that's why my bike's not here. It's inside, and it's it's it's, it's a major hassle to uh, take it out the doorway, down the steps, because it's it's a heavy bike. Uh, I, I, with all this mentioned, I love, love, love my Ducati Monster. I'm not bad mouthing it. I will, I will keep this bike for years and years and years. I mean, it is one of the best things that has happened in my life. Uh, I mean, I love, that's how much I love my Ducati, if I could express. So it's just that you can't ride it in the hot summer. If you live in a climate that gets like 95, 96, 99, 101, um you know rethink your plan if you're gonna buy this bike to commute i mean you can ride it to the store and back or you can ride it to go get a burger and back but just don't get stuck in traffic like if uh, uh major lights you know where you're sitting there surrounded by cars and you're in the center and you're just heat stifled and and the bike is just running hot to begin with it's just miserable and i have been in those situations and i'm just not going to ride the bike when it's when it's when it gets over like 96 degrees i mean and that's hard for me to do but let me just re-emphasize here's the coolant i also just wanted to show you that it that this is the, what came out of the bike it, when it came out of the bike and i had it in the oil change tray that was black it made it look really brown and really gross but this is the Ducati coolant and you can clearly see that it's very, very pink. And, uh, and that's, this is even diluted with, you know, 50% water that I flushed out of the motorcycle to get this out and make sure it was all out. So just want to reemphasize that that's that. It wasn't that the, the, the uh, Ducati coolant in there was, was ruined or damaged. So it's actually good coolant. But let me also just touch base while I have you here. This is the Nissan uh, certified uh, radiator and uh, heat exchanger coolant that I used. I had an extra bottle. These were $35 years ago when I bought them on Amazon when I was doing my uh, heat exchanger upgrade on my car. So I had this bottle sitting here unopened and uh, it was $35. You can get engine ice too. Uh, from the local uh, motorcycle stores or one of the other uh, other stores that sells a lot of different parts and things uh, but I didn't want to go out and spend another 35 40 dollars on that when I had this sitting around and this is uh, excellent coolant uh, and so I, I didn't want to I didn't want to go that route so I wanted to use what I had so the people are gonna say you should have used engine ice you should have done something different well, this is a trial process and, and I didn't see huge changes and I don't think that the engine ice would have performed uh, any percentage, any greater percentage better than this, than this actually did. So I didn't want to blow that money. I, money's hard to come by and uh, most of y'all should be able to uh, realize that or have that same uh, sentiment. Uh, unless you're really, really wealthy, and then $37, you might as well just throw out the window. But uh, just wanted to touch base on that. But I appreciate you tuning in and, uh, and uh, check out more videos. And I hopefully uh, I have a lot of integrity and I try to make really good videos. And I don't want to sit on this video any longer, you know, a month so that I can, you know, try to ride the bike or wait till, you know, uh, November to ride the bike and then hold on to this video this long. Uh, and not put it out. So I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, close it out here and, uh, and then you can make your own choice. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.